don't scare me, but you should fear me The sun is setting, don't trust your hearing You made a monster, I'm your imposter Go ahead and wander, but don't trust the water hey guys and welcome back to my channel i am back with another true crime video and today we are going to be doing the story of lerato masango and Sbusiso masango if you are new to the channel i try and do these videos often so please do check out the playlist i've done a couple already and i will be doing more in the near future now before we dive into today's video there is a little housekeeping that we need to do i have to stress that this case is fairly new it only came out in may of 2023 as much as it happened in 2022 now obviously it is still sub judy k and therefore i have to stress that everything that i will be saying in the video is alleged obviously because it has not been proven in a court of law yet now with that said and without wasting any more time let's dive into today's video today's video takes us to the north of pretoria in gauteng in a township called soshangube Larato Mashang was born in the year 1991 in Soshangube in Pretoria. She was described by her family as someone who was kind, smart, and well-behaved when growing up. When she was only five years old, she was left with her aunt Joy in Soshangube because her mother had to go and pursue a higher education because she wanted to be a teacher. And Joy would later say that Larato blended very well with the family and she enjoyed growing up amongst her cousins. She would stay with Anjoy until she matriculated from Hlopanang Secondary School in 2008. Thereafter, she would move back in with her mother in 2009, where she would try and pursue a higher education. In the year 2013, when she was 22 years old, she met a young man named Sibusi Sositebe, and they immediately fell in love. Now, I need to stress here that this is not the Sibusi so that she would later marry, and in fact, this Sibusi so is the victim of the story. Sibusi Sositebe came from a Christian home. His friends and family described him as a loving person with a great sense of humor and someone who really did not like any sort of violence. Sibusiso Sitebe was a taxi driver and he was really doing well for himself in the industry. The couple got along really well and in fact Lerato's family really loved him for her because he treated her really well. And almost a year into their relationship, the couple fell pregnant and they welcomed their first child in 2014. And unfortunately, things did not work out for them and very soon after Lerato gave birth, they separated. Although things in her personal life were not going well, professionally things were looking up because she was given a job offer by Old Mutual where she would be working as a financial consultant. After the relationship ended between Larato and Sibusiso, unfortunately Larato would bar Sibusiso from seeing their daughter even though he longed to be part of his daughter's life. And unfortunately that was that uh, Sibusiso Sitebe would not be able to see his daughter for a very long time. And unfortunately, life went on. Now, not too long after these two broke up, they actually started new relationships. Now, this is where the story gets tricky. So I really want you guys to concentrate because there are actually two Leratos in the story and two Sibusisos. So I need you guys to understand who is who. Okay, until this point, we have been speaking about Sibusiso Sitebe, who I've already mentioned would later become the victim of the story, and Lerato Masango. Sibusi Sositebe would then move on and start a relationship with another lady named Larato. They would go on and have a baby of their own and coincidentally it was also a daughter and I feel like Sibusiso was longing for a daughter as well in this situation because you must remember Larato is blocking him from seeing his firstborn daughter. On the other hand, Lerato Masango would actually also go on and find herself a Sbusiso. I know a lot of Leratos, a lot of Sbusisos. But anyway, Lerato Masango found herself another man, and this man was named Sbusiso Masango. And these two would go on to become the perpetrators of the story. The new Sibusiso, also known as Busiso Mashlangu, was born on the 28th of April in 1990. He was a part-time videographer, and the reason I say part-time is because he spent most of his time doing criminal activities. Larato Mashlangu and Sibusiso Mashlangu hit it off almost immediately when they first met and they got into a romantic relationship. Larato's family would later state that they did not like the new Sibusiso at all, and not only because he was involved in criminal activities, but also because he was extremely pompous and extremely disrespectful towards the family. And not only that, to make matters worse, he also kind of made Larato change. Larato used to be family-orientated, she used to be respectful herself, and 
she used to go back home very often. But after she met the new Mosiso, she would pull away from the family and hardly spoke to any person in the family. Nonetheless, with all the noise in the background, the relationship did not show any signs of stopping. In fact, it was going hard. The couple bought a house together, they bought an RDB house in Shoshanguve, and then they welcomed two girls of their own. So you must remember, Lerato came into the relationship with a firstborn child, which was a girl that she had had with Sibusi Sositebe. So when she got into a relationship with Sibusi Somatlangu, they then welcomed two girls of their own to make it a family of five. Things were really going well for the couple and in fact in 2018 Sibusi Somahlangu proposed and the couple got married later on in the year. This is an actual image from their wedding day. Not only were things going well for Lerato from a personal perspective but from a work perspective things were about to get better. She actually got an opportunity to work at a higher rank but that meant that she had to move to Mbumalanga. So she would still be working for the same company old mutual but for her to get the higher rank unfortunately she had to move to Mbumalanga. So the couple decided that you know what this is actually good it's going to be good for the family in the wrong, long run so you can move to Mbumalanga. So she would actually travel back and forth from Bumalanga to Soshanguve, which was around three hours, and that is how they were just doing things. Around mid-2021, Larato Mashangu and her husband, Sibusi Somashangu, started plotting towards defrauding Larato's employer, which is Old Mutual. Now, if you don't know, Old Mutual is one of the biggest companies in South Africa, and it has a division for life policies, and this is important. So they start plotting that, you know what, uh, we need to re defraud your employer. I do not want to lie to you guys. I do not know the reason why they came to this decision. It might have been because they, Lerato had now moved from Sushanguve, which meant that they actually had two houses to run, one in Bumalanga, one in Sushanguve. Or it might have been just because, you know what, Sbusi Somashangu dabbled in criminal activities in any way, so he just came up with the idea just because. So we don't know at this point, like I already said, that the case is not deep into trial yet. So that has not been revealed. Nonetheless, they did take the decision that, you know what, we need to defraud Old Mutual. Now, it wasn't very difficult for them to decide on the logistics of the fraud because Larata already worked for Old Mutual. So she knew the ins and the outs of the business and she knew that a life policy would pay if certain requirements are met and therefore all they had to do was to just go according to the guidelines. So one of the main things that had to happen, obviously, for a life policy to pay out is that someone had to die. So they decided that they would fake Sibusi Somashango's death and then he would be insured with Old Mutual. So the reason that they chose Sibusi Somashango is because obviously they can't choose Larato. Larato has to go back to Old Mutual and work and make sure that the policy pays out. They then went on to do the admin of actually insuring him for 2 million rands with Old Mutual and the beneficiary of the policy would be Larato Mashango, which is his wife. So you must remember the time now is around mid-2021. So they were like, you know what, we'll start the policy now, we'll register you and everything, but we'll give the policy time to mature. So it's not like they want to register the policy today and immediately he must die tomorrow no they were like you know what we'll give it time it's mid 2021 we can do this in december or or around january the following year which is 2022 so the months leading up to the day they would actually fake Spusi Somashango's death were going to be used for other preparations. Now, we're talking about one, if you're going to be faking someone's death, you actually need a body. Um, and also, they had to think about things like, how are we going to fake his death? And that it looks reasonable and it doesn't actually cause any alarm or actually lead to any sort of investigations. Now, as you would imagine, getting a body, I feel, would be one of the main things. And during the discussions, when they're trying to actually think how they're going to do things, it then comes out, either from Lerato or Sibusi, so that, you know what, we could always use Sibusi Sositebe's body. And Sibusi Sositebe, you must remember from the beginning of the story, as Lerato Mashango's ex-boyfriend slash the father of her first child. Also, it's extremely important to remember that Larato and Sibusi Sositebe had not been in any form of communication for years. Because you must remember, she barred him from seeing his daughter. 
So now, because they need a body, they decide, you know what, reconnect with Sibusi Susitebe. And out of the blue, Lerato calls Sibusi so in October of 2021, three months before the deed had to be done. And she basically said that, you know what, the child is sick, and I feel like she's sick because she's not recognized by her ancestors from your side, and I really want us to do some traditional ceremonies for her so that she gets better and she's not sick anymore. And she starts apologizing. Apologizing, you know, I'm very sorry that I bought you from her, and I really, really want to make things right. So I'm in Malanga now, but when I'm back, I really want to make amends and sort things out and just make sure our baby is not sick, and then you can start seeing her more often. And that was just the gist of the conversation. And you can imagine, Spusisa has been waiting for this moment his whole life, so obviously he's going to say yes. Obviously, he's going to be excited. Obviously, he wants to have a relationship with his child. So he really gets excited about it. He tells Lerato, his new girlfriend, and you know what? They, they welcome it because they, this Moses has been longing to have a relationship with his first child. Lerato would, over the next two months, call often just to remind Spusi so that, you know what, I'm still off that mindset. I still want you to see the daughter. I'm just stuck in Bumalanga. As soon as I come back, I am going to arrange a meeting. I'm going to give you a call and you're going to come out and then you're going to see your child. So she kept calling, basically dangling the carrot in front of his eyes that, you know what, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm going to let you know when I'm back. Two months went by and Lerato had not called yet. And Smusiso might have even forgotten about that phone call. But finally, on the 1st of January of 2022, while Smusiso Sitebe was enjoying the new year, literally ringing it in with his family and friends when he got the phone call. And obviously, no one knows what Lerato said on the phone call, but the assumption would be that you can come. You can come and see your daughter. I'm in town. And unfortunately, Sibusi Susitebe did not waste any time. He literally told his friends and his family that he's coming back now. He has some business to attend to. He will be back. And unfortunately, that would be the last time they would see him because when he got to Soshangove, he was ambushed by the other Sibusi Somashangu and his life was taken from him. The next day, on the 2nd of January of 2022, Lerato pretended like she was going back to work in Bumalanga and left her husband, Sibusiso Mahlangu, to actually deal with the scene. And so Sibusiso Mahlangu started preparing his fake death. So what he did is that he put the body of the late Sibusiso Sitebe on the bed. It was already half burned, so the plan was that they were going to burn the rest of the house with him. So he dressed Sibusiso up in his own clothes. He also took off his wig ring and he actually put it onto the ring finger of Sibusi Susitebe. He then proceeded to douse the house in petrol and he set it alight. He left the house with a disguise on and from a far distance he watched the house burn. And luckily for them, their neighbors noticed the fire burning pretty quickly and decided to start making plans to extinguish it while they waited for their fire brigade. They also made attempts to call Lerato and her husband. They both weren't answering, but finally Lerato picked up and they told her that, listen, the house is burning down. We can't get a hold of your husband. And she mentioned that she would be making her way back from Mpumalanga immediately. Now, obviously, the whole thing of the neighbors extinguishing the fire themselves is literally messing up their plan because they're both thinking now, what if the body hasn't burnt enough? What if someone else goes in and identifies the body and they notice that, listen, that body is definitely not Busi Somashangu. So the plan was that Lerato must just go to the house immediately. Now, you must remember, Bumalanga is three hours away. Lerato was there within 15 to 30 minutes. So I don't know how she explained that, but she was the first person in the crime scene and she was the first one to to go inside the door when the house was extinguished. By the time the police arrived, Lerato had long been at home, okay? So they went into the house and they wanted Lerato to officially now uh, identify the body. And she was able to tell the police that, listen, I can see this is my husband 100%. You must remember, only the upper body was burnt. So she was able to say, I can see these pants. They belong to my husband. And I can see that this is my husband. Definitely, he is still wearing his wedding ring. And this is my husband. I know my husband. And the police took her word for it because, I mean, the body was found in their house he was the only person who was staying there and the man is wearing the ring so he was identified to be Sibusi Somashangu when actually he was Sibusi Sositebe 
And when it comes to police investigations, that was the end of it. Unfortunately, Sibusi Somatlango had passed away in a fire at home and that was the end of it. Case closed. So almost immediately, the family started preparing for his funeral, which was going to be the following week. So you know how when it's a week leading up to your funeral, there's stuff that has to be done at the mortuary. Sometimes families want to wash the body. Sometimes families want to identify the body and so on and so forth. Or any other administration that has to be done at the mortuary, the family would usually have to go there. Now, during this week, Lerato was like, if there's anything you guys need to do at the mortuary, I'm going. And the family could not understand. They, they were like, you know what? You have lost your husband. You need to just sit on the mattress and just mourn. We will handle everything. And Lerato was like, no way. I am going to, if, if we're going to have to go identify the body again at the mortuary, I'm doing it. If anyone has to be washed, I'm doing it. If there's any admin at the mortuary, I'm doing it. And I'm doing it alone. And unfortunately, that is exactly what happened. And a few days later, the funeral came and unknowingly, Sibusi Somatlango's family and friends buried a different man, Sibusi Susitebe, while thinking it was their own son. Meanwhile, on the other side of Pretoria, Sibusi Susitebe's family was looking for him. They had not seen him since the 1st of January, 2022, when he left abruptly, saying that he had received a call and he had to attend to some business. The family started creating missing persons posters and they called everyone they knew, trying to find out if by any chance they haven't seen or heard from Sibusiso. And unfortunately, it was to no avail. Luckily, Sibusiso Siteba's sister came up with a brilliant idea. She had a, a friend who worked for Vodacom and Sibusiso was also using Vodacom. So she decided to call the friend and ask for a favor to know, you know what, please look at Sibusiso's call log for me and find out what was the number that was the last to call him on the specific day. So when the friend came back with the information, it was actually revealed that the last person to call Sibusiso was actually Lerato Mashango. Uh, the family a bit confused by the decided to call Lerato. Lerato Masango immediately denied this. She was like, no, I haven't spoken to this man in months. And also, you guys, you're disturbing me. I'm literally sitting on a mattress. I've just lost my husband. I'm very sorry that Busiso is missing. I hope you guys find him, but I'm also going through a lot. Sibusiso Siteba's sister, who called, actually later revealed that she actually felt sorry for her. She didn't know that she was going through that. She didn't know she had just lost her husband. So she shared her condolences and literally felt bad for calling. And she remembers thinking, oh my word, like so much is going on. My brother is lost. Narata has lost her husband. Ugh, 2022 is a terrible year. And they just assumed Vodacom made a mistake with the call log. And you know what? They went back and they started looking for Busiso Sitebe via posters and asking people on the ground yet again. Immediately after the funeral, Lerato and her husband, who's still very much alive, moved back to Mpumalanga. And unfortunately for him, as much as he probably didn't want to, he literally had no other choice but to move from Pretoria because everyone around there thought he was dead. So he had to relocate with his wife and go and stay in Mbumalang. Almost immediately when they got there, they started to claim from insurances. They started with a claim from Old Mutual and it did not take long and they paid out 2 million rands in 2022. To top that off, they also claimed from the home insurance because they had burnt down their house. So insurance also paid out for that. And what they did with the money is that they renovated the house and they sold it almost immediately. Now, one would assume that because they had a little bit of cash lying around, Sibusi Somashang would actually relax with the crime, but he actually didn't. He still enjoyed dabbling in crime here and there. So the extent of which the car that he was driving in Bumalanga was actually stolen. And unfortunately for them, in 2023, just over a year after they had actually received the payout, while Sibusi Somashang was in Hammerskral doing his usual activities, the police got a tip off that there's someone who's driving a stolen vehicle. And luckily, the police wasted no time and they stopped the vehicle and literally asked him, where did you get the car? What's the situation with the car? He could not give any concrete answers as to why he was driving a stolen vehicle and they took him into the police station. When they got to the police station, the police decided to charge him for being in position of a stolen vehicle. So while they were processing him via his identification, they then actually discovered that this man is registered as being deceased. 
So obviously that is a huge red flag. Why are you dead on the system? So obviously the police would now have to investigate a little bit more into his case. He was arrested. He was going to stay in jail because he was found with a stolen vehicle. So they had him sorted in terms of that. But what they really wanted to know was, why are you dead on the system? And luckily he was willing to talk. As much as he did not reveal everything, but he did actually implicate himself and Lerato in his confession. They also dug up a little bit more to actually do their own investigation. And that's when they found out there was actually a life policy on this man that was claimed. So definitely there was a fraud case there. They also wanted to find out whose body was buried in his place because usually in these cases, the police know these type of cases. They know that people need to get bodies to actually succeed in these type of claims. So that was also another thing that I had to look into. And obviously that would mean that a murder case has to be introduced into the mix. And on the 26th of May, 2023, the body of what was supposed to be Sibusi Somatlang was exhumed and it was identified to be that of Sibusi Sositebe and his family was notified about this. DNA tests were done to further confirm this test and they came back positive. So you can just imagine how broken Sibusi Sositebe's family was because they had not stopped looking for him. They were still looking for him and they were hoping to find him alive. It broke their hearts to find out that in fact, he was right under their noses. They, he was actually buried by a different family at a cemetery not too far from where they lived. So very heartbreaking, very sad story. I think very tragic and very evil from the side of Lerato and her husband. So please comment down below. Let me know what you think about the case. The case is not done yet. I will probably do a review once it is done because this is just... Um, the gist of the case that is what we know so far so I'll definitely update you guys later on and I really hope that they get justice because they really deserve it and honestly these people are evil guys thank you so much for watching stay safe out there bye